Hi. Oh, thanks to you guys for sticking around. Um, I have to admit, it's pretty intimidating to come on here for Teen Young Living with so many people. Um, I come to you to share my story and my heart and what I truly, truly believe helped my team get to Royal Crown Diamond one person at a time. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk through my story a little bit because it's relevant to my message and talk on community. Otherwise, I would save it for a different day. But I, I really, truly think that I hope that you walk away and you look at every single person and you think, oh my goodness, young living can benefit this person's life, their wellness, their physical and their emotional wellness. And they might also just really dig this business because I think that you know, a lot of times we look at someone and think, oh my gosh, they are so not living the young living lifestyle. They're probably never going to want our thieves cleaner, or they're not going to want to do this business because their husband is a surgeon and they're busy and they have 17 kids, whatever. We cannot let our minds go there because I was a very, very unlikely young living member and not someone that you would think would do this business. So I'm going to take you back to 2013. At that time in my life, well, let me just say this really quick too. I am a yellow red. I am mostly yellow with a little bit of red. And I only say that because I see a lot of people say, are there any yellow diamonds? Like, does that exist? <laughs> because I think that yellow comes across as like super emotional. And yes, I am very emotional. And that is why I love this talk that I'm about to share with you on community because relationships are my jam. So yes, yellows are emotional and they don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And it's all about love and how can I help you, but they can also grow a young living team utilizing those skills. Okay. So back in 2013, I started, um, I didn't have any sales experience so to speak of. I uh, went to school to be a teacher. I taught. Before that, I was a flight attendant, worked in probably every restaurant. I loved serving. I loved the rush and meeting people. And um, at the end of the night, just I walked away fulfilled. <laughs> like I remember taking an aptitude test in school and customer service came up and I was like, wait a second. So I'm going to work at Payless and be a checker. Like, I want to be an attorney. Like, no, that's not what I'm supposed to be. But I love people. I love serving. And I just didn't know what that was going to look like down the road because Young Living came in and changed my life. Um, but people are my jam. Solving problems are my jam. So I was a, a flight attendant, a teacher. I got married, um, had kids. My husband was in the military. So I would love to hear in the comments or let me know if you're a military family because it's a different culture. It's a different existence when you are moving around every three years. It's hard to like put your roots in the ground and really feel like it's home and get to know people because everybody's about to leave. You're there for a little bit of time and then you're leaving again. And that's really exciting, but also hard to build those, those lifelong meaningful relationships. So we are moving a lot. Um, at the time, my husband had been accepted to medical school and we were in our third year of waiting for him to start. He had been accepted and every year we'd been deferring because the Navy wouldn't let him out. Things were changing and it was just really stressful. And I'm a pretty high stress person anyway, but when we talk about fundamental needs, I am going to explain why that is a totally normal thing to do to want to control your environment. So anyway, I was really stressed out. We had just moved from Washington state to Florida where I didn't know anyone. I had one acquaintance, I knew no one. Washington and Florida are on the opposite sides of the country. I had two little boys and a husband who had just started medical school. And if you have been and if had friends or family in medical school, it's all in. You don't just kind of do it. It is, it is all in. And I didn't see my husband. It was uh, easier when he was deployed in the military than when he was in medical school. Um, I can say that with 100% certainty. I was also really sick at that time. I was in the hospital about once a month with debilitating migraines. I was in a position where uh, people would ask me to do things and it was like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. I might be sick. I don't know if I can commit. And I started thinking like, this is this, this life sucks. Like I'm sick all the time and I hate this. I was 
a wreck, an emotional wreck. And I have to say that I have not been to the emergency room for a migraine since I started Young Living. That ha that's, that's life-changing for me. But that's another call. But um, anyway, so I was emotional wreck because I was lacking something that I didn't even know what I needed. I didn't even know what was missing in my life at the time. I couldn't name it. I just knew that I wasn't fulfilled. So I ended up buying a kit from a friend on Facebook. I didn't know anything about oils. Uh, I really kind of thought they were weird. Someone had invited me to a class probably 18 months before. And I, you know, I, <laughs> I thought, well, gosh, I'll just use my medicine. Thank you though. I just thought they were weird and that they didn't work. I had bought some oils at a trade show once and they were in my cupboard and we know why they didn't work because they were, they were flake oils, but I didn't know what I was getting into. It was just very spontaneous. And honestly, I bought because of FOMO because on that message and the reason why I was following her is because she's a photographer and I bought a camera and I was going to be a photographer too, but that's not how it works. You have to have more than just a nice camera. So I was thought, but thank goodness I wanted to be a photographer. I may not have been following her on Facebook. So she was posting about using uh, peace and calming and peppermint and she was replying back with, I'll send you a message. I'll send you a message. And I was like, I want a message too. And she put me into this group called the Lemon Drop Lounge. I think that's what it was called. Is that what it was called, you guys? I don't really check the chat because I get off task. And then, yes, Lemon Drop. And whoa, whoa, I didn't care what they were selling. I was a part of this group, this action where I would post something and people would respond to me and it was popping. And I felt like I was getting dopamine hits like all day long. I couldn't wait to put my kids to bed and get on my computer and get into the lemon drop lounge and then talk about oils. Like what is happening to me? And I'm, I, I wasn't concerned about chemicals in my life. I used to mop the floor with bare feet using bleach. And I used to rub dryer sheets on my skin because I thought they smelled good. And this was all happening when I got started with Young Living. So it did, I didn't buy my oils because I wanted my family to be healthy. I kind of wanted my kid to sleep. Melissa was talking about that and it was FOMO. So don't ever judge anyone and think that, I guess you need to think that everybody is a possible member in Young Living and is a possible member to do this, a possible a future brand partner. So I hit the jackpot by choosing, young, or by buying from Melissa who happened to be with Young Living. I didn't know. I'm so, so grateful because <laughs> buying that kit changed my life in several ways. But people generally come to the table to do this business for three different reasons. Usually it's because they already love all of the non-toxic products. They've been living this lifestyle for a long time and it's parallel to, to, their, to their values, right? Or they see the business opportunity and oh my goodness, do we have an amazing business opportunity just sitting in our laps? Or they come for the community and that was me. I didn't join Young Living because of the integrity of the products or because of the seed to seal promise or um, because I was already living that lifestyle. I came to the table and stayed because I was getting something from that group that I was lacking in my life. And that is so important to me. Community is huge. I believe that it is where loyalty is born because of the relationship, because of the connection. I believe that it's the soul and why people keep coming back to us is because of the community. Yes, we, we have the best products on the market. Yes, yes, yes. But without that community piece, I think we're missing a huge opportunity for our teams. So I believe that Young Living saved my soul. <laughs> like, I know that sounds crazy, but I think I, I was so miserable at that time and such a shameful place to be when you have two little perfectly healthy boys and a husband that's doing something and giving his life to, to be a doctor, to, to, to serve other people and so that we have a nice life. Like I should be happy, what is wrong with me? But I needed community and I needed exactly what the Young Living community was offering. So 
I'm just curious before we start talking about community and then diving into fundamental needs and then how you can grow your own community. I'm curious what you guys think about community. Like when you hear that, what does it mean to you? What fills your cup? And what communities are you involved in? Um, do you hang out in your neighborhood and play bunko? Are you like a Girl Scout mom leader? Is that our Girl Scouts? Even? Yes, Girl Scouts, Girl Scouts are still a thing. I'm just curious what you guys have to say about communities and, and, and how much of a value they have in your life. Peace, belonging. I felt seen and heard and acknowledged in that online community. I felt like I belonged. Yes, peace of belonging, friendship, education. Yes, all of the resources support, so much support. You guys, I, I see friends now on my team and cross-line friends that they would never know each other and have that rich experience and that connection, that relationship without our Young Living community. They wouldn't. I just had a message today from one of my leaders calling me in tears and just like five years ago, I didn't know you. And thank goodness her enroller brought her to the table. I would never know her otherwise. And last week I had someone call me from Tallahassee where I built my community and, and tell me how much she missed it. And we're going to talk about the mistakes I made too, because that's important. I want you guys to not make the same mistakes I did because it's a real, it's a real heart issue for me. Yes, Tracy. Oh, wait, no, 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 wait. I think Tracy said that written um, chemicals helped her migraines. Okay. Okay. I'm going to get going. I could just sit here and, and read the comments and forget that I'm talking here. Okay. So I have my notes here because if I don't, and I say, so like every two seconds, I got to stop. Someone needs to like shock me every time I say, so I have my notes in front of me because if I don't, I will go from, you know, C to Z and, and miss everything in between because I just get, get going on tangents. So the word community is without question central to our human experience. It's a sense of belonging. It enables us to share personal relatedness and to support perpetual growth of each other, ourselves, and our environment. It can be anything from a physical place where geographically people connect and touch each other and look at each other's eyes or a virtual space on social media or a private platform. Communities are like-minded people that together they have the similar, similar characteristics and, and common interests. Um, having communities embrace a spirit character and it's a feeling that people within that community matter to one another. And being a part of an engaging community provides opportunity for people to learn from each other and support and encourage and that grows and it multiplies like a domino effect. So there was a couple little little key points that I, I saw when doing a little bit of reading up on this, you guys. And I didn't know that our seven fundamental needs or categories as humans would align so well with community. I just know, I just knew that in my heart, that was the soul of my business and what mattered. And when I moved and it crumbled, I lost a little piece of my heart and I don't want you guys to make that same mistake. Okay. So support, we support each other through communities with influence with community participation comes empowerment. And when people feel empowered, they have a sense of control and then they go out and they tell people about it and, and affect positive change sharing. We're, we're uh, stimulating innovation and growth and ideas breed new ideas. I was on a, a, a weekly accountability call today with six people and that's a little community in and of itself. And I say something and it, it motivates somebody else to do X, Y, and Z. Jill says something. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know about that, Jill. Where did you get that? Like being in that sense of community just breeds new ideas. It is a beautiful existence. Okay. Connection. You build valuable relationships, the deeper sense of belonging, and you, it helps us to reach our goals and also ensure our sense of security. Learning and resources, I already kind of said that communities are rich in resources because everyone comes to the table with their own uniqueness, their own experiences, their own knowledge, and, and we share that knowledge. And then passion. Communities 
give people a place to show up and fly their freak flag or um, not their freak flag, but a place where other people are passionate too. Because if I start popping off about Young Living and about chemicals and whatnot to the women in my community, they're like, whoa, step off, weirdo. I mean, I say a little bit all the time, don't get me wrong. But if I really, really, really want to fly my flag, I'm going to do it where I feel safe and comfortable in my community. So when we're in our, I did it again. I need to be zapped when I say so. In our community, when we're together, we are, we are spreading confidence and encouragement. And then people share with others because it gives them the wings to go fly versus not having that support and that connection and, and building that confidence. And our, when we're in a community, our strengths may be somebody else's weaknesses and vice versa. And that's a beautiful, beautiful connection to be able to give and receive and depend on one another. So when we are engaged in communities, we, we inspire, we solve problems, we share, we, we exchange humor, we vent our frustrations, we share our achievements, we talk about our marriages and how our husbands are on the freeway all the time because of their white matter. Thank you, Dr. Ollie. I now understand why my husband is smart enough to be a doctor, but has a hard time ordering at the kiosk of a, any kind of restaurant. Um, <laughs> people who stay in a community are the ones who agree passionately with its values and these shared beliefs of trust and togetherness. And there's no limit to what we can do when we're operating in a community because it brings us together, like-minded people who are headed for the same goal undoubtedly nurtures rewarding and engaging communities. All right, so I did it again. I literally, I need to stop, I need to stop. You guys, I was sniffing my orange because it reduces cortisol and I was pretty nervous to come on. And then I had my sacred Frank because I needed to calm down a little bit. And then when Dr. Ollie said that it puts your brain to sleep, I subbed it out for <laughs> peppermint. So thank you, Dr. Ollie for the awesome education. Online communities are amazing. And that is where that 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 is where it started for me. Because it provide it still provides that place to be seen and heard and feel like you belong and that you have a purpose and you can still have that massive connection. And they are so, so completely important because it gave me what I needed. Uh, but when I started my business, I saw people in different states different regions that were holding classes and doing speed oiling and having a spring cleaning class or doing libido um, or, um, oh gosh, we're making, we're, we're doing diff diffuser bracelets. I cannot talk diffuser bracelets this month that I already say that. So many things, it, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Providing value to someone might just be getting out of the house to be together. In Tallahassee, we, everything was education-based and I'm gonna get that, see, I'm getting off of my plan here. When I started with Young Living, like I told you, I wasn't, I wasn't really concerned about the toxicity of our world or my gut brain axis or anything like that. And now eight and a half years later, I've completely changed my lifestyle. I've come full circle. And I'm so thankful for all of that knowledge and the resources that I got from my community and from Young Living too, because they've been doing, they've been doing a wonderful job with giving us education and materials. It wasn't like that when we started eight and a half years ago. Uh, it, they are much more on the ball in that regard. And I'm so thankful. So the, the community pulled me in and then I fell in love with the products. And I almost feel, I don't know, like a poser being a Royal Crown Diamond to say the community, the community filled me up and that's why I stayed. And then I fell in love with the products and then I realized the business opportunity. So it doesn't have to look the same for everyone. You might be standing next to someone in line who's just like me that has something missing in their lives and your community might just be the answer. They might be your next diamond. You never know. So never judge someone and not offer them your community or your products or your business opportunity because you don't know what's going on in someone's life. So I did it again. 
uh, I built that local community in about five years, but not I, we built the local community in five years. And by the time I left Tallahassee, I moved away from there three and a half years ago. People knew who we were. We had plethora of silvers and a couple golds and they knew that we were the wellness, the wellness group in town. We were the oil group in town. And it took time, one person at a time and a lot of relationship and a lot of consistency, but you can do it. It starts with one person, one person at a time. So the world, I'm all, the world has been a little bit weird. Do you agree in the last couple of years? It's been a little bit weird and uncomfortable and uncertain. And suddenly we lost that ability. It just got ripped out from underneath us. We lost that ability to just get together. And getting together is really important in our hearts and our souls. And it drives us to take actions and live a happy life. We need those healthy relationships. And we lost that togetherness and belonging when we suddenly couldn't do it anymore. And I'm ready to run full speed ahead and build that community again here locally after the last couple of years for those who feel comfortable gathering. There are still some who do not, and we will try to do things outside as best as we can, but I'm ready to take my life back and to, to, to invest in these relationships and to do the things. Never any expectations for anyone to come along for, on the ride, but I'm, I'm moving ahead. I want what we had. Really quickly, we're gonna talk about the seven fundamental human needs because they, <laughs> every single one of them supports building and investing in a community for your business. And even if it isn't for your business, you get so much back from the community that even if you're not talking about them living, do it for yourself. Do it for your own mental health. And if you want to do it for young living, that's, that's an extra bonus. So the fundamental human needs or categories are keys for success in life. Understanding empowers us to be our best. Like that's the, that's the only way that we can be successful and have successful relationships when we understand people's needs. When you understand the fundamental needs of other humans and people, people will follow you wherever you go. When you realize what makes someone tick, you're not gonna lose them. And that's why I think that loyalty is born in these communities that we have locally and online. And I will say that influential people in history they didn't get there. They didn't get to where they are or where they were alone. They had a tribe of people with them, supporting them, encouraging them, doing it together. You very often, you don't very often see someone super successful who doesn't have a tribe of people supporting them along the way. We need each other. It's a, it's a fundamental need. So there's, there are seven of them. And we are not going to spend a lot of time talking about them, but I do want you to see the significance in these human needs and how they relate to communities. The first one is survival. It's safety and survival. And that is pretty, it's pretty obvious. Physi physiological needs, our food, our water, our air that we breathe, we reproducing and safety, security, protection, resources, healthcare. And I think that Young Living <laughs> gives us the tools we need to support our family health-wise. And if we don't have our health, then nothing else matters, emotional and physical health. It, nothing else matters if, if you don't have that intact. It doesn't matter how much money you have, where you live. It doesn't matter. It's our, the most important thing we have is our health and wellness. Our Young Living communities empower people to make decisions for themselves and for their families. Number two is understanding and growth. This one kind of got me right in the ticker because I feel like I talk and I want to be understood. It is a real trigger for me to not be understood, to be misunderstood. That will just make me fly off the handle. But Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand, then be understood. Oh my gosh. 
how many arguments could I have avoided with my husband if I came to the table with an attitude of seek first to understand and then be understood? Like, what is wrong with me? I'm 47 years old and I'm just learning this now. What the heck? <laughs> so the second fundamental human need or, or category is understanding and growth, the need to be under, the need to understand and be understood, to be understood by others and to be understood by others in the world around us. We are communal beings and we are designed to be in relationships and communicate with others. We just are. Each of us has an inherent need to be understood and our survival depends on it. And there's an example of a baby crying because he's hungry, because he needs his diaper changed, because he needs to be picked up. It's a, it's a survival tool to be understood. And we have also a need to, to understand, learn, and grow, to investigate the world around us, to analyze our curiosity around us. I love that in our communities, we are constantly growing each other. We have so many valuable resources and it's just, it's, it's a place to learn and grow. Number three, connection and acceptance. Oh, Nellie. <laughs> Humans need for love, connection, belonging, acceptance, identity, care, and community. We have a need for others to accept us and to have strong relationships. And I've often wondered what is wrong with me? Why do I need to be accepted by others? Why can't I just say to heck with it or use other words as my husband would and not care what people think? He, he goes around and, and acts like he doesn't care what people think about him. Well, you know what? I just, I just put a hole in his theory. He's a human. He does care. We do want to have connections and be accepted by others. Belonging and love are shown through relationships and connecting with others in community. So I want to let him know. Without good relationships, we cannot have unconditional love. Relationships are the arteries that carry the healing balm of love. And Harvard research indicates and has supported the age old wisdom that good relationships are the secret to a good life. I see my dad. He came over yesterday to bring me something weird. I don't know. He, I love that he comes up and drops off random things, but he's been alone. For, well, he's been alone forever. But the extent to which he's alone right now is like really alone. He has his cat. It's been two and a half years. He seems happy, but knowing these fundamental human needs, how can he really be happy? And it breaks my heart. And I wish he had a community. I doubt he's going to come to our young, love, young living stuff, but I'm going to start inviting him. I'm going to invite him to my diffuser bracelet making class. So we need relationships to be happy and healthy. Belonging and connecting is a social need that we all have. I don't buy it if people say they don't, because I think they do. When we connect, we avoid loneliness, depression, anxiety, and then all the behaviors that stem from those feelings. And most of them aren't, aren't good behaviors that invest in our health and wellness. And also hormones are released when we're together. Oxytocin is released when humans connect and they touch. And human touch, hugs and handshakes and being together is vital for our health. I saw a study indicating that babies who have their needs met as far as being fed and changed, if they're not picked up and loved on, they're impaired because they're not having that fundamental need met. And I think, gosh, on Project Broadcast, where we spend a lot of time connecting with people, so thankful for Project Broadcast. It's a lonely time right now. When people are talking to me who they don't know and sharing intimate deal, intimate details of their lives, I feel pretty honored that they're sharing that with me. And at the same time, my soul hurts because they clearly don't have, it seems like they don't have those relationships and they need what we have to offer. And I want them to come. I want them to join us. Okay. Number four. Uh, contribution and creation. This is a need to actively create, contribute, care, serve for the, for the people around us to make a difference in the world. And it's a need for influencing communities through our participation. So this is kind of where servant leadership comes in, the influence of servant leadership. 
We are designed to live in a community of where we're, where we're making contributions, where we're contributing. And I think that looking back, I can be like, oh, that's what was going on. That's what was going on. Oh yeah, that, that's what was happening with me before I found my living and I was so miserable. And I bought the camera to contribute financially to our family because it had been it had been years, well, a couple of years since I'd had babies, started having babies, and I wanted to contribute because it was it, it ate. We were fine financially. I mean, not really, but <laughs> even when even when I was a stay at home mom and Tyson was an officer and getting officer pay and we were we were fine, I still would take odd jobs and cater and go bartend for fun at my friends' events because I wanted to contribute. It's just our innate desire as humans. So another term for, for contributing is participation. So when people show up and they participate in your community communities, that's seen as, as a contribution. Number five, esteem and identity. This is a need for esteem, identity, respect, significance, and recognition. Esteem is to be recognized as competent and capable. Do you guys see that in your online groups? I do. And to be recognized that our work matters and that we are making an impact. So when people are commenting and they're sharing what worked for them, please acknowledge them because they need to be seen and heard and understand that what they're sharing matters and is contributing to the, the, the greater good of, of your community. So esteem has to do with respect that is earned as a result as the contribution to society or your community. So that's kind of a little bit wordy. Significance and pur purpose is still part of number five. Man's search for meaning is the primary motivation in his life. He who has a, a why to live can bear almost any now. So I'm gonna say that again. He who has a why to live can bear almost any now. And I think back to the last couple of years about significance and purpose, how people have been super isolated from everything that they knew. And I've talked to some people that are completely fine with it. You know, they don't seem affected at all. But is that really the truth? Is it just smoke and mirrors? I don't know. But the science and the psychology says that it's not, that they need what we have to offer. Okay, as a fundamental human need, significance is the need to feel that our lives have meaning, that we are important, that we have value. So does my life matter? What am I here for? And when people find meaning, it helps them realize their significance. And that was huge for me too. Was I just here to cycle intervals of sleeping and changing diapers and putting kids down for naps? I mean, I realize that my job is to raise my boys. I have three boys. Three boys. I think I failed to mention that. I also failed to mention that I got pregnant <laughs> right when Young Living started. All right, when I started Young Living. And um, yeah, that, that changed a lot too. Anyway, my purpose is to raise these, these, these three boys to be godly men. I realized that. But I needed something more. I worked my whole life. I was working when I was 12. I was washing dishes at a restaurant that my sister worked at. The guy was a pervert, but that's another story. That's why I was working when I was 12. But I was just washing dishes. Like I loved washing dishes. I'd go there on a Friday night and I loved it. And then I was making some money. Oh, it so it made my, my boat float. So number six, see, I told you, I get off on tangents very, very, very easily. Self-direction, freedom, and justice. The need to direct our own lives, the need to be able to exercise choice in all aspects of life. This is crucial because it creates an environment for other needs to be met. And I just think that this self-direction, freedom, justice kind of plays into like making the decisions for our health and making the decisions for our family business-wise. And then the last one, the last fundamental need or category is self-fulfillment, self-transcendence. And that is developing one's full potential. So self-transcendence is the self only finds its potential in giving itself to something, some higher goal outside of oneself to be a part of something, a community. So without love, connection, and belonging, many people become susceptible to loneliness, social anxiety, stress, clinical depression, weight gain. That's what Dr. Ollie was talking about. 
and stress is linked to, I mean, almost every disease. I don't know. Stress is horrible for you on your body. So did it again, did it again. So what do we do now? We've established that community is a very important factor in our young living world. I think it's as important as our, as our amazing products. I do, I really do. And we discussed the fundamental human needs or categories as they relate you know, to the community. I think that all of them do. So now what do we do? How, how do we do it? Let me know in the comments if you guys have a local community. Do you have a local community right now? Because we obviously have online communities and thank you to Jill for creating Grow as a space for those who do not have an active upline. You know what, I feel like everybody has an active upline somewhere. Somewhere there's an active upline. But for those who don't know how to find that, that active upline, Grow provides a space for people to come in and connect and it is so important. So thank you, Jill, for all of your work. I love Grow. Tallahassee. Didn't know anybody, one person, one acquaintance. I would say that it took a, almost a year to start enrolling people locally. And it isn't because I wasn't trying, it's because I wasn't speaking influence over anyone locally. They didn't know me. They had no idea who I was, what I, what I offered. Like I hadn't created any trust with them. That's a really awkward sentence. There was no trust between us because the time wasn't there. And so I think it was almost a year when I started enrolling people locally and it started with one. I was enrolling people online on Facebook and it was a little bit different eight and a half years ago. And that was completely fulfilling. But again, I needed that person. I needed that face-to-face. -face. I needed to be able to touch someone. I needed to be able to see their eyes and I wanted it. So my friend said, why don't we have user meetings? Users meetings. I mean, that sounds like drugs kind of. Well, we started and my thought was, well, what if they don't come? Well, what if they don't come? Then you do it again the next month and the next month and the next month after that. You keep doing it until you build your tribe because if you build it, they will come. But it takes time. It isn't gonna happen overnight because relationships worth having need to be nurtured and, and, and loved on just like our plants. So please don't be discouraged if you try to have a meeting or two meetings or three meetings and people don't flock to your meetings. Please don't be discouraged. In Tallahassee, before I left, we would, we would have like 60 people that would come and here locally, things have been a little bit weird. I sat here kind of on my rear end for about six months and was like, wait, I don't know what to do. I'm completely starting over. Yeah, I was completely starting over in a new place. And I started building community and then, and then COVID happened. And so we're just starting again. So it's been a little bit of a rough road and it's been a little bit discouraging and a little bit lonely, but I want what I had because it was amazing. And that's where loyalty was born. So my friend said, let's do this month monthly meetings. We'll call them user meetings. We rotated restaurants for about, I don't know, like two years maybe. And then I eventually found a space that I rented for like $300 a month-ish. And I could, I could have a couple classes a month there. I could meet there. It was great. But I was a diamond at that point. So it was, I had the money to, to rent that space. But before then, we would just call around to restaurants and we really didn't have a problem. Restaurants were completely okay with us having a little area or oftentimes they have back rooms and most people would come in and order something to drink and an appetizer and they were totally happy with it. I didn't have to supply any food. I would cart my stuff down there and uh, I learned that less is more carting things around it worked out beautifully. It worked out beautifully. I had to start bringing a microphone because I didn't want to try to talk over people because that rattled me a lot, but that was a good thing. And people were talking amongst themselves about whatever it was that we were presenting. And back in Tallahassee, everything was pretty, 
education based. We would have a class on, you know, immunity. We would have a class on stress. We'd have a class on sleep, a class on Yingsha. I mean, you can, class ideas are out there. If you go into Grow, Jill probably has a pinned post with a ton of different class ideas. You just have to meet people where they are. And like I said earlier, some people, they don't even care about immunity. They just want to come and gather. They just want to come and have a margarita or whatever it is that you're doing. But by being there, you're talking about your inner defense. You're talking about your pro, your life nine, whatever it is. And you're planting those seeds and they, they go home and buy it. I can tell you right now, I, I, I don't have statistics. I don't have a percentage, but people who aren't engaged are not buying. They're not seeing all of the amazing things that we're sharing. They're not, they're not, you know, they're not seeing my post on my neroli roller and how it's just neroli in here. I wear it for perfume and people constantly ask me what I'm wearing. It smells so good. They don't see that or in person or online. So why would they think to buy neroli? When people are not engaged, I don't, I just, I look down and I just saw it's not the same without you. We had so much fun. I don't know who you are because it's a Zoom, you, Zoom user, but we got to get that back. We got to get that back. Um, so if they're not engaged, they're not typically buying all the things that could help them in their lives. So we know that, right? We know that if they're not engaged online or locally. They're just not seeing all the fabulousness that Young Living has to offer. Ultimately, you want to create a self-sustaining group of users who engage with each other. And this is where my big mistake happened. And I hope I don't cry. And I can't believe I've been talking for 43 minutes because last night when I went through this, it was 20. I'm afraid of what I've said. So first thing, be a river and not a reservoir. And that comes from John Maxwell. And I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed of myself to tell you guys that when we started having our meetings, I didn't want outsiders there. And outsiders, I mean by people that weren't on my team. I don't know why. I'm not a jerk at all. I mean, not usually, but I wanted things, I wanted things special for us. And when Tyson would come home and he had an hour on a Sunday and he sat down and wrote a post for us or did something that was scientifically based, I wanted it just for my team. And that was wrong on every level. And I wish I could take it back. I mean, I wasn't like super mean about it, but I definitely was not like team young living. Let's do this. And I can tell you, and I can make an excuses as to when we first started this business, we were pretty like lemon droppers. It's just us. I could tell you that that's maybe where I learned it, but still my action, I'm still responsible for my actions. And when, when a couple of years ago, Tyson and I spoke at convention about Savvy, which was so much fun. Somebody came up to me and said, I heard that, that we're not allowed to come to your local meetings. And that was huge knife in my heart. Could I have been more selfish? Could I have been more of a jerk? Well, I can tell you that that is not how I operate today. And I don't exactly know why I wanted to keep things so special for us. I guess if I were to look deeply, it's probably because I wanted people to come be a part of something to join us. Well, that's the wrong way to do it. So don't be like that. Be a river, not a reservoir. If you have events, it's okay for other people to come. It's investing in that community and you're giving back and enabling people to have relationships and connect and belong. Don't do what I did. It was rude and I'm very ashamed of myself. The next thing that I did wrong and it's why the community for lack of better terms crumbled when I left. I didn't think it would, not at all. Not at all. I didn't think for two seconds that it would, they would stop meeting. But I had, I think, the three legs, really. I had a little bit. Yeah, I had primarily, well, two. Yeah, yeah, three legs. And we all worked really beautifully together. But what I was doing wrong is I was doing everything. And it's not because I didn't think that my leaders 
were unable to do the things that I was doing. I literally thought that I was doing my best by organizing, by doing all of the planning, by bringing all the things, by doing all the talking. Who wants to listen to me talk every time? I don't know everything. I don't even know things I should know. But I didn't share that responsibility. So when I left, like, what did I think was going to happen? Who was going to take my place? Who was going to fill my shoes when I didn't let anybody? So doing it all over again, I would absolutely share the responsibility with my leaders and give them the chance to plan and bring the things and teach whatever it is to do the make and take. I thought I was being helpful. But I was actually cutting all of our throats, but we can get it back. It's okay. It's not forever. It's not forever. And I will tell you, looking at numbers, I can't tell you a percentage because, oh, Carla, <laughs> oh, I just looked down and saw one of my girls. Um, numbers went down significantly because people stopped showing up. Well, they, there was no place to show up, but they stopped showing up and learning about the products. It matters big, big, big. So did it again. Now I'm acutely aware of how many times I'm saying so. If you don't have a online community or you would like to, you have one, but you want to make it bigger and better because it felt so good to be in mom group and say, hey, what do you think about these essential oils? Or lavender. And then to see like all this popping off, uh, tagging going on and I like I look like a weirdo like, <laughs> like I'm, now I'm <laughs> acting silly all the all the popping going on all the tagging going on all my leaders just bam 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 bam, bam. and I sat back and I was like oh mama bear it's like those are my people that's my team so exciting I know that probably sounds silly but my piece of my heart is in that 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 community down there it meant so much to me so getting active on social media and engaging with your members and your prospects is going to help you build that local team. Getting out there, being seen, being heard in the moms groups, in the plant groups, in the knitting groups, in the whatever groups. That's what I did. I started being intentional about being active. So then we became Facebook friends. People would see what I did. You know, you guys have probably all heard about that on different calls. It takes a lot of time investing so that people know what you have to offer, what value you bring. And you have to earn that right to speak influence on those people's lives. And that, that's, what takes, that's what takes the time. And they become your friends a lot of times. Showcase your interactions. And I'm gonna use a silly word, don't judge me. Um, but you kind of have to pimp your gatherings a little bit. Because FOMO is big, it is real, and it works. And it isn't that we are uh, being manipulative at all. It's human nature to want to know what somebody else is doing. They're gathering and they're making these, these, uh, these lubes. They're making these room sprays, these linen sprays. They're making these thyroid support, support rollers. What are they doing? Well, if you're not sharing it on your social media, then why would anybody know about your community or want to be a part of it? You have to show, and I'm a, the worst about my, my stinking phone. I'm the worst about taking pictures because well, I think taking selfies is super awkward anyway, but in the moment, it's hard to get your camera out and like, hey, take a picture. But it's really important because you are, you're, you're, pimping, you're pimping your gathering so people want to be a part of that. You're showcasing for someone that doesn't want to use the word pimp because that's not a very nice word. And I'm kind of silly, so just disregard that. I'm hoping to offend anybody. Um, that's utilizing social proof. How about that? That is a better word. Utilizing so social proof that your community exists and people want to be a part of that, okay? And that is going to advertise for your community. I would create a local platform, a local group for your people. So we have a local group here. And we have a local group in Tallahassee that I don't, I don't post anymore. I need to. And then that would serve as a way for people to interact and say, oh my gosh, 
I need some orange. Does anybody have any orange that I can pick up? I will, I will replace it, whatever. When you have that local community, people can inter interact with each other, engage, and they become friends too. They really, really will. And then when you have your local events, it's a great way to communicate, help to foster those relationships and to showcase those local events. When you nurture your community with gatherings, you'll grow faster. And I know for me, if I wait until I'm ready to do an event, it isn't going to happen. It isn't because of various other reasons that pop up that are more important than, you know, things pop up all the time. And if you wait until you're done and you know exactly what you're doing and what you're going to say and what you're going to make and all your stuff is ordered or whatever, it probably won't happen. Set your date and work backwards because with a deadline, you will get it done. And when you invite people, you can't just throw up a graphic on, on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. You have to actually pick up your phone and voice people, voice them, call them, text them, email them, whatever, personally invite them. Because throwing up a, a graphic is like throwing up and praying that they're going to come. They're going to see it. And what is it like 10% of people see what you post anyway? So when you throw up a graphic that you're having an event at your house and people don't come to it and then you feel discouraged and like nobody wants what you have to offer, well, 10% of the people saw it. And of that, those 10%, how many people live locally to you? So you have to take that extra step. Something that I would used to do and I need to do again is I would send out little postcards to people locally that we were doing that event so that it would be in their hands. They would see it. Project broadcast is a beautiful way. An example, when I first moved back, we had, I don't know, 500 members here. I got to finish up. I'm talking too much. We had 500 members here about, and I thought I was going to roll into town and I was just going to pick up and we were going to have what we had in Tallahassee. Nope, that didn't happen at all. Nope. And I think our first event was, I don't know if it was our first, but one of our, one of our first events was a diffuser bracelet that we had. We did it at a pub and it was called Brews and Bracelets. And I posted about it and like two people signed up. I sent out a project broadcast and within hours, 25 people had signed up and I had to stop. We were at capacity because we were doing it at a facility. That is the power of personal, personally reaching out. And project broadcast is personal. You could be more personal, but it's better than just throwing up a text. So that is, that is crucial when inviting people. It's up to you what your topic is, what your agenda is. Meet people where they are. Like I said, value might just be getting out of the house and being around other people who aren't in diapers. I'm looking at my notes to see what I missed here. If you have an online community, I encourage you to spend five or 10 minutes a day in your community tagging and interacting because if I am in Grow, I'm just using Grow as an example. If I'm in Grow and I put my people in Grow, but my people don't see me in there, why would they feel welcome to participate in there? They're probably not going to. So spending time in your online community is important too. And whatever, whatever online community that you're in, just being in there is important for a couple minutes a day. Nobody, nobody wants you to spend five hours a day in there, but just getting in there and spending a little time and investing means that you're contributing, you're participating into the bigger, the bigger community, like the fundamental need that we talked about. So that is really, really important. Jill, it is uh, quit in time. And I actually cannot believe that I just talked that long. I, oh, I have an action item for you. It's all about connection. So I challenge you tomorrow to sit down with your personally enrolled or your prospect list, which I hate that word prospect, your list of people who need young living and engage with them. Just talk to them, not even about young living, just engage with them because they probably need a friend because of this, the world right now that's getting, it's going to get better because we're going to start having our gatherings and loving on each other again. So that's my action item for you is to engage with, did I say five, five, five people tomorrow, either on your prospect list, people who need young living or you're personally enrolled or do five of each. 
but just pick up your phone or get on your computer and make that contact because that's going to trigger that dopamine release for you. You're going to feel better and they're going to feel cared about seeing heard and well seen and acknowledged, I guess, not heard if you're reaching out. So 